Hey, Century 21 veterans, happy Monday. What is it every day like a Monday around here these days? Coming I didn't even life? know what day it was. Yeah, I, right? Tell me about it. Um, they're all starting to run together, and they all end in Y. So um, I am in uh, Pendel, Pennsylvania. Mel, where you at? I am in not so sunny Levittown at the moment. It's a little chilly out there. I know it was a hard deal, man. Yesterday was uh, was opie do, not so bad. Um, got a lot of yard work done yesterday. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> I got a garden planted. <laughs> Good for you, man. Um, so, what do we got cooking today? Um, so I think there's a lot of cool stuff. Some... Oh, let me go first then. If we're doing oh. cool stuff, let me go first. Okay, I got, it. You got it. Title company. Um, you know, we got a word last week that Tuttle couldn't do anything, uh, contracts written uh, and executed, um, you know, after March 18th. Now we come to find out that we're going to be okay with that. Um, that said, there's going to be some new rules in place, and there's going to be some things that are, um, you know, necessarily going to change um, the highlights. Um, your buyer is going to get uh, an overview of the contracts from the closer via Zoom. Um, and then day, two days later, whenever that happens to be, they're going to do a drive up signing. Um, so they'll literally they'll drive up, they'll sign documents, they'll be notarized. It's, uh, if you haven't done it yet, it's a, it's a touch weird. Uh, you know, I've been through it a couple of times with various different clients that we've had. Um, but it does work, uh, works effectively. I think the piece that they put in now that works for me because, um, uh, I, I had the opportunity to explain it my nephew bought a house um, two weeks ago. So I had the opportunity to explain it to him, um, you know, but to be honest with you, a little bit weird. Uh, you know, I haven't done it for a while. Um, you know, you get all the documents, you run through them with them, you ask some questions and, you know, and you know the paperwork, but um, a little odd for me to be doing it. Um, so I imagine it'd be odd for a lot of other people to be doing it. So they've taken that piece back. So they're going to, the closer is actually going to call your guy, do a Zoom meeting, just like we're doing now. And, um, you know, so closings will be a little bit uh, more normal, I guess, the best way to say it. So, so good you still can't go. Yeah, uh, right. Agents can't go. Mortgage can't go. Um, you know, they're, they're very disappointed. They like that opportunity at the end, but uh, you still can't go. Um, so that's the end of that conversation. Uh, we'll send out an email um, giving you guys an update on how it's going to go so that you can prepare your client. Um, still with uh, anybody that didn't get the whole seller uh, deed pack, got to do it, man. Trust me when I tell you. it's uh, It's been a thing for Melanie and I for 10 years now. We don't do it any other way. Um, but now it's uh, it's even better. So what else you got? Um, so I'll get to the, the kind of like bad news before all the good other stuff that's coming. You know there's bad news. It's not really bad news. Um, yeah. unemployment it seems like it's going to be bad news. It's not. It's not. Right. Unemployment that's compensation cool. is, um, like, well, so it's not really up and running. It's not really working effectively, but the link is out. You can go on. I did go on for a friend, and I know two agents of ours went on uh, Saturday, pulled their hair out, trying to get through the website. It spins wildly out of control, so your best bet is to go on, um, I would say probably like after 10, 11 o'clock at night when nobody else is on the site. Um, it is going to ask you for proof of income for 18 months. So that's going to be your 1099 from 2019 and any checks that you were given from January to currently. So make sure you have those on your computer because the system times out which is not great if you have to go looking for the information. So have your 1099 and your paychecks and stuff there. Um, I can tell you that you can upload your 1099 and your paychecks. And then the next day when you go in to check it, you'll have your 1099 uploaded three times and the paychecks will be nowhere. It's a very odd system. I don't know what is going on, but they tell us that it's going to take another three weeks to determine your eligibility. So that's been fun. And don't, uh, don't stress out if you see the number that says $195 is what you're getting because it appears that all independent contractors are getting the same amount. So yay for everybody. Um, if you're licensed. Yeah, is that a big deal? I mean, we're going back to work April 30th, aren't we? No, May. Oh, no. Yeah. May, no good. Uh, yes. So. Yeah, I just got that word, right? The governor has extended our furlough until yes. May the 8th. So, yes, go apply for your unemployment. Um, yeah. And that date is May 6th that we stopped working. Um, March 6th. 
yeah, in March 6th, sorry, <laughs> not May 6th. I wish it was May 6th. Yeah. So if you are licensed in Jersey, we just got this from Jill. Um, if you're also licensed in Jersey, do not say that you made income in the other state. It will automatically kick you out and you cannot apply. So your money actually comes from PA. We're a PA office. Uh, so I'm going to go with that because otherwise it's going to kick you out. And um, let me see what else, what else, what else? Oh, three more weeks on eligibility. Super fun. It's going to tell you to log in tomorrow. Um, if you get into the system, it'll say log in tomorrow and record your hours. You can't actually record any hours until they approve it. So that's been fun. And people are really um, kind of upset about how it's all working because even regular unemployment isn't correct. So hopefully the governor announced today, May 8th is our new stay at home orders. So um, that'll be fun for people at Garden because we're all apparently going to be doing that until May 8th. And then on May 8th, it's not an automatic open up. He's going to slowly determine what can be open. And we're hoping that maybe real estate is part of that since uh, Todd Polachak is involved with putting a bill on the table that is got Democrats and Republicans both accepting it and liking it. And that is all about real estate and putting us home inspectors and title back to work. So that's exciting. Whew. That was a lot on unemployment. <laughs> it is a lot. Um, so big picture overview, right? 30,000 foot view. It's not that great. And it's not currently up and running well. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it may be the best you can do. Um, so we encourage everybody to apply for it, um, you know, and, and we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, we're looking to get everybody back to work just as quickly as is humanly possible. Um, and to that end, we're already starting to work on procedures on what happens when, you know, they, they turn the light switch back on and say it's okay for us to do that. Please don't expect that everybody's going to rush back into the office and there's going to be 20 people in the lobby. It's not going to work that way. There are going to be differences in the way we do business. And these are the kind of things that we're going to have to start thinking about from, from an individual practice point of view. If your practice is having buyers in, in the car with you, you may want to think that through. You may want to look at that and say, man, that's probably not the way to go anymore. Um, you know, you're going to have, we don't have any guidance on this yet, so we don't know what it looks like, but I think we can assume, Mel, fair enough that we can assume that it's going to mirror Jersey in a lot of ways. We're so close, it probably will. So right now, Jersey's one-on-one -on -one contact, face masks for everybody involved. And, and no, so not Mr. and Mrs. Buyers, you may have to do two appointments for a buyer. Mr. on one side, Mrs. on the other side. I mean, it, it just, there are a lot, there's going to be a lot of nuance to the way we do business these days, you know, coming up in the future. So you, meet, you need to start thinking about it now. Um, now, you probably get a couple of websites where I can order stuff like masks and gloves and things like that. We can get that out if you guys need them or want them, but you can do your own research if you don't want to use ours. Um, but just start thinking about stuff like that because it's going to happen. It's coming. Yeah, where, where are you going to get face masks and gloves? I mean, let's just say May 8th is a magical date and they say, okay, you can now do showings one-on-one. -on -one. Um, when your client calls you and says, I really want to go out, but your requirement is a face mask and gloves, um, what are you going to do? You know, so make sure you have a supply of that stuff so that if you do start to go back to work, you can follow the guidelines and you can do it on the date that he says we're allowed to go back to work as opposed to, oh no, now I have to order stuff because right. Amazon is not my friend anymore. Man, I was going to say that I am over Amazon right now. I ordered something for my granddaughter last night and Amazon used to be, you know, next day delivery because we're prime and we're business and blah, blah, blah. Right. What do you get? I'm getting like eight like, weeks. I know, man. I know. Now, now, I don't know what an emergency situation might be that you couldn't, have a, a, a fake ice cream truck delivered. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm getting the same deal. So yeah. And Amazon is not your best friend for masks and stuff like that. Anyway, um, there are other companies and unfortunately they do come from China, but right now the production in the United States is just not there. Um, so if you're going to have to order masks, you by bulk because your buyers may need them. Your seller might want you to have them. Um, here's our suggestion. Do not leave a bunch of masks at the listing because people will take them. It's kind of like Halloween candy. When it says take one, yes. they take 10. Yeah. Um, so I would have them though, if I were doing buyer appointments, because you don't know if, you know, the buyer's going to have that, but that leads us into our listing and buyer presentations real quick. Um, so one of the things we keep hearing from other offices and stuff that we're doing on, um, online is that, your listing and your buyer presentation are probably going to change. You're probably not going to a listing and sitting face-to-face -face with, with many people anymore in the next couple months. 
So think about what your presentation needs to look like. Um, inside of 21 Online, we do utilize uh, the program in there. So the presentation is there. You guys may just have to update it. I mean, what, what are you gonna do as a safety precaution for your seller? Um, you know, what you need to prepare them for what this is gonna look like, that there may be Zoom meetings at their house, that there may be virtual showings, that they need to step out. There will be no sellers going to stay in the house. They're going to have to step out into the driveway for a buyer to go in. So you wanna prepare your presentation so that it reflects what you are going to be doing because Professional photographers may or may not be going back to work when we go back to work. These may be iPhone photos that we're going to be taking for a little while until phot photographers are allowed back. Um, what does your buyer presentation look like? You need to kind of prep the buyer up for what's going on because the last thing you want is they pull up in a van and it's mom, dad, four kids, and grandma. Oh, that's not going to work. Nobody's going to be able to do that. So, hey, for the record, I don't like that before this COVID thing happened, but now I really don't like it. Yeah, so you know, make sure you prep them up because they're going to think, okay, we're back, this is so great, we can go see real estate, and they're gonna to wanna to shop, right? So um, apparently, like, rates are changing, credit scores are changing drastically, uh, so you need to make sure that the pre-approval they got two months ago isn't valid anymore. Like unless they got it in the last couple of days, I would be asking for a new pre-approval from the lender before you put people out and start looking at houses. And again, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So I don't know when that day is going to come, but make sure you have a new pre-approval and make sure you update your listing and buyer presentations. So I would partner. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I would partner up with somebody in the office though and zoom each other and do an actual listing presentation. Yeah, exactly. I, an agent, I would want to zoom with Ken and maybe his wife, Denise and say, Hey, do you mind if I present a listing presentation to you, right? How are we going to do this? And Ken and Denise might get on and, you know, it'll be fun. We'll get some chuckles because I'll, I'll have flubbed something, but mm -hmm. at least I can do it in front of them as opposed to in front of the seller. So I would practice a listing presentation. I'd practice a buyer presentation, buddy up. Another thing you got to think about when we start getting back into this is where are my leads coming from? Um, you know, it's, I, it's, it's not going to be the same. If you're the type of agent that likes to do an open house every Sunday, you're going to have to figure out a new way to do business. Because, oh yeah, no open houses. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's not going to be the same. And if you're, um, you know, if you're counting on that kind of thing and it and it falls flat, you're going to have a really really dry August, September, and October. So you might want to think about okay. What do I do? How does this work? How do I make it work? And we're constantly trying to get ideas out as far as what we can do lead generation wise to make stuff happen. If you, if you just want to have a conversation about it, pick up the phone, give us a call. We'll set up an appointment. We'll talk about, you know, the, the top five things that we think you might want to do just to get back in gear. Uh, and I can tell you number one right now, um, a lot of you don't know this, but the number one agent in our office does not spend a dime on advertising. Oh my God, how does John Caton do that stuff? Well, he uses this thing, right? And and does this thing on it. Do I need to demo that anymore? Or do we have that? I'm just saying, I mean, it's it's you're already paying for it. Call somebody and say, hey, Today, call them up and say, hey, how you doing? How's it going? Can I get anything for you? Can I do anything for you? Because I'm going to the supermarket and I know you can't. Is there anything I can help you with? Because that's going to go a long way in May, June, July time frame. They're going to remember that kind of stuff, right? But when it gets back into real estate, I want to call and go, hey, you know anybody wants to buy or sell a house? Just a conversation. And, you know, those are the kind of things we used to do in the old days, in the old den days. So, so um, I think open houses are going to actually turn into Zoom open houses and they're going to be live and people are going to log into your link. So maybe we'll do a class on how you can actually buy a rider that would say zoom open house from one to two and what that zoom link might be that you could actually okay. get those riders ordered early. You about this stuff already or what? You should write it down because I'm a genius. Yeah. All right. So I also want to discuss real quick. Um, one of our agents is secretly lead generating because if you, if you look at what this particular agent is doing, you would think it has nothing to do with lead gen, except it has everything to do with lead gen because she is in front of a ton of people. So Nadia went and developed a page called Mercer Food to Go during COVID-19. That young lady in two weeks has 2,500 members to this group. 
And the post she did yesterday was had over 225 comments and 66 shares on one post. And what she's doing is going and just kind of putting out what food is available and where, as in what restaurant has takeout, curbside <clears throat> pickup. It's kind of a cool little genius thing this little girl did here. Because in all fairness, 2,500 people that I can now talk to, she's posting tips on real estate. She's posting, I think yesterday that was shared a ton was one of the restaurants is giving away a family pack of dinner. It's $60 value. And you had to like the restaurant's page and you had to tag three people on the comments. So she's getting new members each time she's doing this, which I, I think is wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that there is somebody out there who's given out an item of value, right? Like where can I eat now during a pandemic? Yep. Right? And, and they're registering on her site and and she's then going to have clients down the line that she can re really it is, is that really what's happening i think when i saw her page i was so stunned because she's doing cute little videos introducing the restaurant maybe doing other things on there but I, it's a genius way to get 2,500 people to talk to you because after this is all over, people kind of trust her. They see her every single day on that page. I would love to know the restaurants that are currently serving food. Yes, me too. <laughs> Pendel Palace area, because I'm getting a little tired of SpaghettiOs, to be honest with you. Every day, SpaghettiOs. If I eat at Joe's Pizza one more time, I'm going to strangle my kids. <laughs> only we get you grooved into where we're going. We're trying to think. We're supporting local uh, restaurants and stuff, so we're getting a lot of takeout and stuff like that. And um, you know, but yeah, you, you do tend to go in like a like a four block radius of your house. So yeah, not far. Yeah. So Nadia, congratulations! That is a super cool thing that you've been doing. Um, and well, I've been paying attention. I love it. So, all right, one more thing, because we are taking listings and buyers are buying houses sight unseen. Um, yeah, so I get it, it's gonna happen. Maybe on the south side though, to find out how much the buyer really likes this house and is really into this house is maybe potentially taking a look at whether or not the seller wants to say, if you're gonna buy it sight unseen and you're gonna do inspections when everything opens back up, it is very easy for a buyer to just say, you know what? I found a better, cooler house. I really don't want this now. And it was a waste of the seller's time. So maybe you might want to put into play the first 500 or a thousand dollars of the earnest money is non-refundable because then I can assure that the buyer is really interested in this house and not just playing the game and putting something under contract in case nothing else better comes on the market. If that makes any sense. So, we heard about the strategy earlier. Obviously, we've been, we've been pushing buying houses off videos and that kind of thing. And it's a great idea. One of the unintended consequences that we're finding is that people are just putting in an agreement of sale on a house because it hit the market um, with the intention of killing it at the home inspection. Um, so now I got a three, four, five week period where the house hasn't been marketed because you're under contract. Um, maybe a way to maybe get the buyer to get a little more skin in the game is to get them on a hook for a thousand dollars, non-refundable. Um, and then at that point they won't be, uh, just, you know, frivolously putting in agreements to sale on every house they say. To right. something. Yeah. And, and then that way, if it does fall apart, you know, the sellers, the sellers got a $500 to a thousand dollars. That's now their money. And it obviously it doesn't pay mortgage payments, stuff like that, but it, maybe it helps a little bit to just kind of secure the, the contracts together on this. So, yeah. I think other than that lovely May 8th, we're extended. You guys need to tune into Governor Wolf uh, on Facebook. I mean, he's got a, he's got a Facebook page. It's, I don't know. There's nothing much on there. He really gets a lot of negative comments because he doesn't have unemployment. Right. Correct. But, yeah. but, um, he does do a lot of press conferences and that's kind of where we're getting a lot of the information about when we might be able to open up. So you kind of need to pay attention to what's going on. Um, again, what we talked about with Governor Wolf has nothing to do with Jersey. Jersey's one-on-one. -on -one. You guys should be, I don't know if I were you, I would sit and do a real estate class and get my Jersey license yeah, man. while uh, I'm shut down, but that's, yeah. that's me. <laughs> yeah. Now's not time to be day drinking and hanging out and doing nothing, man. I mean, learn, learn something new. I am learning something new. I am teaching myself something new 
Um, what is that, a chess board? It is a chess board. You do um, not know how to play chess? I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, born and raised in Philadelphia, what would I know about chess? Um, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I, I learn, I'm learning the rules, and what I'm finding out is that uh, learning to play is not a difficult thing. Learning to play well is a difficult. bit more of a challenge. So, so you get checkmate on one move, your first move, and you can oh get good, a checkmate. It's yeah, crazy. It happens. You know, it happens. So, uh, yeah, you know, you're just trying to figure out things to do. Learn, take something up, man. Learn a class. Get your CEs done. I, I got to tell you, I'd be stunned. If I get anybody that needs CEs when this thing's over, shame on you. So, well, I can tell you that Kathy actually uh, emailed in. She needed <laughs> – Jersey's pretty cool about this. Apparently your 15 hours that you did for PA in order to go to Jersey and take your test yeah. has to be done in the last three years, 36 months. So she was two months too late. Um, but she did find a cool class at Manor college that is offered online. It's the 15 hours, but it's 15 hours of what is the national test. It's kind of like a recap and, and kind of goes over the national part of it. So super helpful if you're going to have to go to Jersey and retake an entire exam. So, um, if you guys are interested in that, hit Kathy up. She, uh, Kathy Anderson, she just signed up for the class. So, um, hopefully she can tell us how it went and, and how quickly I guess it went, but Jersey is open for stuff like that. You got to have your 15 hours and you can go over there and sit for a new exam. Cool. Matt, looks like we're putting people to sleep. I know. I think that's it. All right. Um, hey, you guys, we're thinking about you every day. We're trying to get you back to work as quickly as possible. And as always, if you have anything that you need to discuss, I don't care what it is. Um, pick up the phone, dial up one of us, and, and you know, even if you want to just get it off your chest, I, I think that there are people in the uh, – in the Pennsylvania State House, that are idiots, and I can't name them by name, but I'm sure you can work with me on it. So, um, if you just want to get it off your chest, by all means, give one of us a call, and we'll we'll be happy to commiserate with you. All right, talk to you guys soon. See you guys.